Hallelujah. I trust that God will speak to our hearts. Um, pastor said something very remarkable while I sat there. I listened very attentively and he said the purpose of conventions or conferences is to receive instruction, you know, impartations and so on and so forth. Very, very powerful. It's important that we understand that when God gathers us like this, it is for our good. But we have a role to play, to listen and for our hearts to be open. Hallelujah. When Peter encountered that man at Gate Beautiful, he said, look on us. And the Bible says the man looked at them steadfastly, expecting to receive something. You can look expecting to receive. Hallelujah. Can we lift our hands to Jesus and ask him for an encounter tonight? Go ahead and cry to your maker, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Speak to me. Expose me to your wisdom. Expose me. To your light. Lord grant us grace access to light by the spirit of the living God for in Jesus mighty name we pray God bless you please be seated we rise in this kingdom on the strength of the light that we have access to it takes more than a sincere desire to rise and to excel in this kingdom. God so designed this kingdom to function in a way and a manner that it is the presence of light that guarantees our rising. Isaiah 60 verse 1, it says, Arise, shine, for your light is come and that the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. So if your light does not come, there is no rising. Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 2 tells us that when he speaks, there is an energizing of the spirit that can step into the life of a man and grant that man the capacity to rise. Ezekiel 2 and verse 2, he says, Son of man, he beckoned on him to stand upon his feet, and he had no strength. But verse 2 says, The Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. Someone will rise tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. When I saw the theme for the convention, I was so, so touched first and foremost by the faith of the man of God to have captioned this convention with such a title, especially because of the times that we live in. We live in times where many people have been disappointed across nations, economically, politically, and it looks like um, the trust and the faith of so many has been dashed in disappointment. Is that true? Seems like there's been all kinds of despair, not just from a political standpoint, spiritually, and you travel from nation to nation and you see that the the despair seems to be the same is a common thread that moves across many people asking is god still alive many people asking is this how my christian experience will be so it matters that we deal very carefully with this subject and help people to understand that this god that we serve is a mighty god i need to say that as simple as it is you must have it as a revelation that the god that we serve it's not a man no it's not a man no you're the god who opens doors no man can shut you're not a man no you're not a man no you're the god of everything no one it matters who God is to you. Jesus was speaking to the disciples and he said, Who do men say that I the son of man am? And they asked, they said all kinds of things. Some said you are Elias. Some said you're one of the prophets who reincarnated. He said, but you have walked with me. What is your own testament? And he was shocked that even those who walked with him did not know who he was. And Peter speaking by the spirit said, I know. He never said we know. 
because when it has to do with the revelation of the power and the might of God it's not a corporate thing it has to be a personal revelation it says I know who thou art thou art Christ the son of the living God and he said flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but the spirit of my father and he said thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build a church my church I will build my church upon the rock of revelation you see not just a man that the dexterity your stature and dexterity in the kingdom is predicated upon the depth of your revelation the sons of Skiva casually went and tried to bring deliverance to the demoniac and he made a very serious statement the man under the influence of the spirit he said Jesus I know Paul I know he says who are you in other words we do not see you sustaining that pattern of revelation before manifestation you are trying to administer deliverance but your faith is not standing on anything so I'm hoping that within the few minutes we'll have to share that God is going to expand someone's understanding of God so that it will swallow away the doubts the unbelief shut down the voices that the devil may has may have you know declared unto you that you are now receiving anything that God did not say is a lie the definition of a lie is not an untrue statement based on anything it is what God did not say the moment God did not say it it is called a lie are we together so the Bible says let God be true and every man a liar men do not have to be wicked to be liars is that most people do not have the power to make what they say come to pass that's what makes them liars God cannot lie because he has the power to make anything he says come to pass so if God calls you lifted that statement can be a lie if it does not have the power to sponsor that statement. The reason why we say God cannot lie is not that God does not lie. He cannot lie because the power component that insists that he remains true still resides with him. So before God makes a statement, there is already the power component to insist that what he says comes to pass. Is that not powerful? So if God says you are lifted, regardless the surrounding circumstances, there is an ability within him that when released can veto the, the circumstances and insist that what he says is what happens. This is very, very powerful. This is what I believe about God. Please pay attention now. There is nothing you cannot do. Help me. If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping your word. You're not about to stop doing it now. So tonight, very briefly, journey with me to the school of faith. And let's look at a few things that the Bible has to say as we brace ourselves to see the God of all possibilities work wonders in our lives in the name of Jesus Matthew chapter 19 and verse 26 this was a very interesting statement Jesus was rebuking the rich in that statement and he said it is easier for um, a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to inherit the kingdom of God and the disciples were perplexed they said who then shall be able to make it and get into the kingdom of God and Jesus beheld them the Bible says and said unto them with men this is impossible he says but with God how many things all things prophesy to every situation say all things are possible with God one more time say all things are possible with God second scripture second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18 I like the way Paul puts it Paul is mentoring the church in Corinth and here's what he says while we look not at the things that are seen but the things which are unseen and he gives the reason he says for the things that are seen are temporal 
the word temporal means under a certain condition it is subject to change not under every condition but that no matter what happens around a man under a certain condition it can change hallelujah it says but the things that are not seen are eternal or permanent this is a very powerful statement that everything you see the moment it is visible paul says it can change everything so he's saying do not allow the things around you to affect your faith he says because there is a possibility in the dealings of god with man that anything that is visible can change this is very powerful visible there does not just mean objects it also means conditions and situations is someone learning already that any condition provided it is manifest in this realm paul leaves us with an assurance that under a certain condition it can change so the question is not whether my life can change the question is not whether my situation can change the question is not whether things can change it is for me to find out by the spirit the condition my assignment is to search for the condition not to debate about the possibility of the change poverty can become prosperity listen carefully sickness a sick person weak and beaten down by infirmity can become a healthy person the bible is full of these conversions for instance he turned water to wine is that in your bible even satan believed that all things could change he asked jesus to turn stone to bread satan the one oppressing you already signed it as a witness satan participated as a witness that things can change and he said jesus we are both aware that things can change use that ability to turn stone to bread if water can turn to wine if stone can turn to bread look up please if a barren woman one moment can become a joyful mother is that true the last enemy that threatens men as far as this earth is concerned is death and even that last enemy the bible says that victory has been wrought over it oh death where is your sting he says and oh grave where is your victory are we together while we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen it says for the things that are seen are temporal i'm starting on this note it's important you may not know how but you have to come to a point where you settle that things can change that means this version of me that means the challenges that stand before me the mountains that stand before me under a certain condition my assignment is to show you that condition hallelujah even in science they are already simulating scientific and climatic conditions that can make things happen from a scientific standpoint is that true science has been able to simulate the womb of a woman so that they put seed in a in a medium that resembles the womb of a woman and as far as the growing baby is concerned he is in a womb because they have reproduced that environment and the baby does not know the difference between the real womb of a woman and that object of experiment because they have mastered the art of creating the condition my first word for you tonight is all things can change under certain conditions not under every condition a jobless person can become an employer of labor under a certain condition look up please a sinner beaten down by a life of sin and defeat and satan can become a fiery preacher of the gospel like saul under a certain condition the bible is full of stories of before and the after version of men and situations and what you should really study is not just the men but study the conditions that midwife that trans that conversion most people study the stories but they never pay attention to the condition what made water become wine what made the leprous naman to be 
become one who was healthy. The possibilities are there, but the secret is in knowing the conditions. There are conditions that midwife miracles. There are conditions that midwife supernatural manifestations. What kind of condition was created that turned Samaria within 24 hours as a place of poverty and penury and need to a place of abundance? What kind of condition turned Egypt, I mean Israel, the Israelites, from people who were afraid of themselves to those who were singing songs of victory within a short time? Is someone learning? What condition turned a Pharisee who was persecuting the people of God to become the chiefest of the apostles? What condition turned a weak young man called Gideon to now become a mighty valiant warrior? What turned a man called Samson as a great and a strong man to become a weak man in the hand of the Philistines and to turn back to become a strong man that killed more people in his lifetime. Things can change. Hallelujah. Things can change. Your pain can change. Your sadness can change. It's even in your Bible that you have turned my mourning into dancing and you have turned my sorrow into joy. So settle it right now that what you see is waiting for you to initiate a condition and it will begin to change sometimes overnight there is nothing you cannot do there's no, there's no mountain you, you cannot move if you have said it then you will do it you have a track record of keeping your word and you're not about to stop doing it now. are we still together remember we're in the school of faith now so paul is saying that anything you see that is manifest can change watch the wonder even in the kitchen for women who cook it is amazing how you can carry all kinds of ingredients and sometimes what you take in does not look like what you take out because a conversion happened sometimes it will need fire sometimes it will need refrigeration You're, you call yourself a chef because you have mastered the art of simulating conditions conditions that produce outcomes are we together a doctor will look at a patient and say okay we see there is still a way around this. There is something we can do concerning this. And he now begins to introduce a condition. For some, the condition may be surgery. For some, the condition may be a bypass. But by all means, he can use even a scientific means to restore. Many of you have used the GPS system. Is that true? And sometimes, all you need to do is to plot where you are and where you need to go the moment you feed the destination it is the assignment to now begin to route roads and sometimes in routing roads it can meet a point where maybe the gate is locked and whatever it is you will never find it complaining immediately without wasting time it begins to reroute and tells you well there may be an extra 15 minutes but i have found another way let me prophesy to someone regardless what the devil has done in the name of jesus we come by the god of all possibilities that god himself is turning things for your favor turning things for your favor putting laughter in your mouth in the name of jesus christ please sit down While we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal. The jobless situation that is seen is temporal. The barrenness situation that is seen is temporal. Dear man of God, the limitation in ministry that looks as if you've not, make, you've not made your calling and your election sure is temporal. The financial situation that has brought you shame and reproach, temporal. The indebtedness, that situation is temporal. The 
the bankruptcy of the anointing upon your head and your life temporal the child that is making you to lose sleep temporal the condition remains until you find out what it takes to change it journey with me very briefly as we walk with the spirit through the school of faith to learn how we convert things how we convert pain to testimony how we convert darkness to light there is a spiritual system of conversion and this is what i want to show you are you ready ezekiel 37 thank you lord jesus we'll start from verse 1 ezekiel 37 now there are not many times in scripture where we have a direct mentorship session as far as faith is concerned there are many of these instances but two of them are most striking in the bible one of it is this scripture where the spirit of god took the prophet and began to school him on the restorative dimension of faith he did not just teach him about faith arbitrarily i mean he taught him faith with instructions and as he obeyed he saw the result there another instance was found in mark 11 where jesus used the story of the fig tree to begin to teach them directly on faith hallelujah so in mark chapter 11 he used faith to destroy something in ezekiel 37 he taught how faith can rebuild back and restore are we together now let's look at ezekiel 37 and verse 1 thank you holy spirit the hand of the lord was upon me and he carried me out in the spirit of the lord take note now and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones verse 2 and caused me to pass by them round about and behold they were very many in the open valley and lo the bible says they were very dry now look up please is it not interesting that in schooling and teaching the prophet the spirit of god does not hide the fact that there was a situation and the bible describes the situation in detail faith does not negate what is the current state of things i mean it was god god did not pretend as though it was not there he caused him to see everything right there took him to a valley and he described by himself that the valley was full of bones and that the bones were very dry looking at the reality of what is on ground now is not faithlessness the foundation of that school is admitting what the current state of things when you admit the current state of things it is not faithlessness it is admission that now opens you up to receive the grace that converts now many many people in a bid to be people of faith do not acknowledge the reality of what is on ground so they cannot even release their faith for a miracle when the bible shows the converting power of faith it first reveals the current situation whether it is sickness it, the bible does not hide the current situation if it does not reveal the current situation you will not appreciate the conversion and the miracle so do not feel bad that your issue is a rent issue acknowledge that there is an issue here but faithlessness there is when it now comes with hopelessness provided you know that the god of all possibilities is there you can acknowledge it is true that my womb has not taken a seed yet it is not lack of faith it is true that i have bills to the hundreds of the thousands and the millions for my children it is true that i may not yet be in my house right now is someone learning now it is true that as it is right now they diagnosed a situation in my body that is in need of a miracle so the, he's pulling him here and the first thing was to reveal the true state of the bones and the bible goes meticulously to tell us the bones were very dry meaning they had been there a long time 
Many people are not able to seek help. Many people are not able to release their faith because they feel that when they admit and they acknowledge the current state of things, it is a sign of lack of faith. No. No. When Jesus came to the earth, he revealed the current state of man's sin. He did not hide it. He didn't just look at us and say everything. No, he revealed it that there was a problem, but that I have come that ye may have life. Is that true? Yes. He caused me to pass round about and behold. Why, why would the Holy Spirit make him to first look at the bones? He would have just created an army and said, well, these guys were dead before. Now they are alive. There was something he was teaching the prophet. He made me to pass around. It is true that I went around and I looked at my bank statement and I saw that there was nothing. It is true that I, I saw the medical report. I went to the hospital and they tested me and they said there's something wrong. But it does not stop at verse 2. Let's go to verse 3. It says, and he said unto me, son of man, this is the question now, can these bones leave? You have seen it. You know this situation. Connect with what I was teaching you that Paul said. Do you agree with me? You may not know how it will happen, but do you agree that this is a temporal situation, even though it has been there for a very long time? And do you know what? God did not punish the humanity of the sincere prophet he said god i am i am in the vision i am with you but sincerely with respect to what i have seen only thou knowest hmm. is someone learning now that it is it is not unusual that there are times even as a believer you can be so overwhelmed by the reality of the situations around you you know it's easy to just comment on things when it does not happen to you by the time someone is told that you have cancer and it's stage three stage four it's easy for an onlooker to say just believe but there are times the real answer is not yes the real answer the believer's answer is Lord this one is only your realm of reality that can answer it as far as I am concerned as a Nigerian as an African living in this day and this time in light of the wickedness that surrounds our world in light of the prejudices only you can answer that question is someone learning There are situations that can overwhelm men and overwhelm their lives. Bring them to points where they literally, even as a man of God, there are times that you can be so overwhelmed that you do not even know. Where will these bills be paid from? After teaching so much on faith, then you go back and it's you and God. Read what Moses did. When the people stood in front of the Red Sea, Moses calmed them down and said, Listen, these Egyptians you see today, you will see no more forever. Then he went to God and was crying. Give us Exodus 14, 14. Please give us Exodus 14, 14. Let me show you something. Okay, let's do 13 and 14. <laughs> Are we together? Help me please. Now, Moses is encouraging the people in verse 13. Fear not. Who is speaking? Moses. Fear not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He says, which he will show you this day. For the Egyptians whom you shall see this day, you shall see no more forever. Say amen. amen. Verse 14. The Lord will fight for you. What a courageous leader. And ye shall hold your peace. Shocking. Go to verse 15. The Lord now said to Moses, why are you crying unto me? After encouraging the people, after declaring as a leader, now it's not pretense. I am just telling you that there are realms where you are overwhelmed. The man was doing the, the needful that leaders would do. Calm them down. Speak words of faith. And then he went and said, Lord, 
2.5 million people are at my neck. I don't know what to do with this Red Sea. I have been able to calm them down. And God was telling him, did you not believe what you told them? The Lord said to Moses, it's in your Bible. Wherefore criest thou unto me? Do you not know that what you said was not a lie? There is a condition that can pass the Red Sea. No one like you, Jesus. No one like you. No one like you, is No one like you. No one like you. You're the God of everything. We believe you are blessed. At Canto and the Word, one of our mission is to create edifying content in audio, written, and visual forms. We invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we do have daily content for your spiritual growth and edification. From the Word to music, graphics, and even prayers. And we invite you to invite your friends. And do share this with your friends because we would like a big family with you all in it. I'm Bisola with Lynn and we'll see you in the next one.